Peter Odom Wingy, also known as Albion's top Premier League goal scorer, also known for the hat trick against Wolverhampton Wanderers, which helped us beat them 5 1, but also remembered for this. Right, we better zoom over to Loftus Road now. Aidan McGee. Aidan, I believe you've got some breaking news for us. Yeah, that's right. Well, I understand there was a, an, an agreement uh, done between QPR and West Brom over the transfer of Peter Odom Wingy at around £3 million just a short time ago. It hit the skids when West Brom requested Junior Hoylett on loan, but also said to QPR that they had to pay his wages. Now, Odom Wingy had already said his goodbyes to his teammates. He was on his way to London. He's been left disappointed. The deal at the moment is at a standstill unless something can be resurrected this evening. These are pictures of Peter Odom Wingy, who has arrived at Queen's Park Rangers ahead of a potential move from West Bromwich Albion. Uh, there are issues that need ironing out with this deal. We told a little bit earlier uh, about some of the uh, problems that have arisen with this deal on deadline day. There are three hours, 45 minutes for the two clubs to strike a deal for Odom Wingy to agree terms with QPR and complete his move from West Brom uh, to QPR. QPR had a second bid rejected earlier this week for the striker, but uh, we know that he wants to leave West Brom. He's made that clear on Twitter. QPR want him to. Will they get a deal done? Stay here to find out. Peter, do you feel disappointed by how you've been treated by West Brom? No, no, fine. West Brom is my home, but it's a new chapter to start in my life. You know, I love West Brom and always will. But, how excited you know, are you about this chapter? Oh, I think every football fan is interested to see if we're going to, you know, uh, make it or not. I, I'm very optimistic about it. A few good players already arrived here. Uh, I'm happy with the trust, you know, that uh, the manager Harry Redknapp is giving me. You know, it's interesting. Do you, you believe keep can stay up now? Yes, of course I believe. The last few results uh, show that there is chance to stay up. I don't think the owners will uh, bring uh, so many quality players and spend so much money if they didn't believe it can happen. So I believe uh, as, as well as they believe. Will you definitely be a keeping our player as of this evening? Uh, well, it's not 100%. It's not sorted yet, but I hope West Brom will be happy with what... Uh, what uh, they will get and of course uh, they hoping to get few players themselves so I just hope things will go well in the last few hours. And you finally got your wish after speaking on Twitter over the weekend? Uh, well, you know, had to push a little bit so... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Now to what's turning into an incredible story uh, involving Peter Odom Wingy and QPR. He arrived at Loftus Road after it was believed that West Brom and QPR had agreed a fee. Odin Wingy himself told us he was hopeful of a deal going through, but West Brom have released a statement insisting a deal has not been agreed and Odin Wingy does not have permission to speak to QPR. We, we have never heard anything like this, a Peter Odin Wingy situation. Pitching up and it seems trying to force through this move tonight to get his move from West Brom to QPR. Simon Jordan and now Quinn are with us. Simon, I mean, if you'd been his employer before he did this tonight, what, have you, what would you be thinking? Well, I mean, I think ultimately it's an unsatisfactory position. I think the players agitated through Twitter and social mediums about what he wants to achieve. But unfortunately, and Niall might have a similar view, he remains a West Bromwich Albion employee and he has to do as he's told whether he likes it or not. Now, the reality of where he finds himself turning up at Queen's Park Rangers, I don't suppose that he's just gone there of his own volition. I'm sure he's been given a nod and a wink. And possibly knowing some of the people involved in this process, I'm sure that West Brom are trying to drive a deal in a certain way that suits their ends, possibly more than QP QPR's. Yeah. I, have, I have a load of respect for Jeremy Peace at West Brom, and, and he knows how to deal. Uh, and I just, in behind this somewhere, uh, the, the, the decision that the player has made to come down is either based on the agent saying, get down here, it's the best chance of doing, uh, do, getting your move. He's bought into it incredibly by doing an interview the second he comes down. I mean, what's he going to say when he goes back to West Brom to his teammates that he shook hands with earlier on, apparently? Um, it, it beggars belief. But somewhere in there, you know, th th there's a lot of bluff on a night like tonight, mm. you know, and he might have gone for a drive around the block and he might be back in half an hour. So I, I'd keep a real close eye on this one. Well, let's say there isn't bluff <laughs> and he's just done this off his own back. I mean, would QPR really want to sign a player that, that would do this? Yeah, it's a, a fair question. Um, 
Uh, but again, many has done that. But going back to Simon's point, you know, he, he just didn't pick a club out of the blue and decide to turn up. Something has gone on there where there was deep interest. The agents here are, are the ones now. They, they, I mean, they've got two hours left to make money. They make no money in the next six months. So all sorts of, 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 of messages will have gone back to players. And in this particular instance, I don't think he'd have come down unless he was sure this deal was going the right way. Uh, it looks awful for him right at this minute. But I, the, hold on, there's a bit of time left. Aidan, tell us the latest on Peter Odom Wingate. Well, the word you use is extraordinary, Jim, and I can't think of a better word myself. He turned up an hour ago. We've since learned that he never actually entered the building. He was refused entry to the building, and I've spoken to the chief executive here. Of course, he was trying to force that move through desperately. I spoke to the chief exec, Phil Beard, and he said he wasn't allowed into the building because they would never show West Bromwich Albion the disrespect of speaking to a player when they didn't have permission to speak to him. So we're happy to set the record straight on there. Peter Odden Wingy is somewhere in London. It doesn't look like this move to QPR is happening. Talk us through what happened to Peter Oden Wingy. He turned up at the club and no one seems to know anything about it. No, I don't know. I, I think he probably felt that, that the deal had been uh, agreed between the clubs and it had, and it was all a bit of a mix up, really. But I feel sorry for the lad and the way the whole thing's turned out, really. It's been difficult. It wasn't to any of our doing. It just happened to be, uh, I think maybe he was, you know, advised that uh, he should turn up here, that the club had made an offer and the offer had been accepted. But I think the wires got crossed somewhere. Is there no way it can be resurrected right not now? Not now, no, not at this time of night. No, it's too late. Beckham's in Paris. Balotelli is in Milan. Odom Wingy is heading back, we think, to West Brom. Talk us through what happened with Peter Odom Wingy because most of us were left quite bewildered by the saga. Yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, I think what we've got to establish is before we can talk to a player, we have to get the two clubs to agree terms. And we've spent the last few days talking to West Brom. We were really keen to make the deal happen. But ultimately, if two clubs can't agree, we can't talk to a player. And I think there was probably a bit of a misunderstanding. And I think Peter came down to London hoping that a deal would have been agreed. Unfortunately, we didn't get to that stage. So we weren't able to talk to Peter at all. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, we weren't able to make a deal work with West Brom. Do you feel sorry for the player? Because he clearly wanted to come here. Yeah, you know, I do. And I think it was difficult for the player. I do think one of the things that uh, is a challenge is when you've got other people around a deal trying to make it happen. But what we have to establish is the terms of an agreement between the two clubs. Otherwise, we're not allowed to talk to a player at all. So it was difficult when Peter turned up today um, and we weren't able at all to talk to him. And we had to ask uh, his representatives to take him you know, away while we tried to establish a deal with West Brom. That didn't happen. So unfortunately, the deal couldn't happen. One of the weirdest transfer sagas you'll ever see. But to this day, Peter Odomwingi still remains one of West Brom's biggest legends. Here's what Adam Wingy had to say about the transfer saga. But before I play you this audio and video, I just want to say a shout out to Full Core Football, where I did get this footage from. Link will be in the description to watch the whole video, which to be honest is a very, very good video. I just took this part out for the, the purpose of this video, but shout out to Full Core Football and the link will be in the description from where I got this video from. Hold the the deal was going to go ahead, that it was 100% going to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, of course, 100%, because the excuse West Brom used to pull out of the deal, to pull the plug, was that Junior Hoylet. I still have the emails, you know, I can prove it, you know. Uh, the sport director of West Brom emailed the agent, because I started asking everybody questions, like what happened? In the morning, we all had an agreement, what happened in the evening? So I said, send me all the emails, all your communication between you and the agents. So they sent me the emails. And in one of them, uh, the, the, the former uh, director was, wrote him around seven in the evening that night. Oh, he says, it's a nightmare. Hoylet won't come. Uh, I'm on the conference call, still trying to sort it. And then he replies, Dan, he said, it was never about Hoylet. Peter Teko, he took a hit from his contract there, you know, you asked us to, how to make the deal happen. We agreed. Now, why Hoylet? He said, it was not, he writes him back. It's not about Hoylet. Why, where Hoylet? Because Hoylet's name came up only once where, uh, uh, where uh, the sport director then jokingly said, okay, this and Hoylet. And my, the agent was like, I can ask Harry for you if you want. Uh, about, uh, he said, no, 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 don't worry. He said, I got this, I'm on it. That was the only mention of Hoylet's name. So then we structured the whole thing. I went to say to Steve Clark, Steve, we just had a chat, uh, all done. I think it's all done. I don't need to train. Uh, can I go? 
He's like, yeah, no problem, good luck. So I leave my, my gaffer respectfully. I go to the dressing room, say to the boys quickly, say, I gotta shoot boys, I'll come. So there was no saga, there was no drama on that day. And I leave, nobody said, everything is fine. Then the sport director even went to eat with the agent. So they were all in friendly terms. So I leave and then I'm at home. Uh, uh, I'm at home packing my stuff to drive to, down to London. As I'm packing, uh, the agent says, oh, I'm on the phone with uh, the sport director here. He's asking, will you give up some of one of your bonuses that's, uh, that's still here for w the points you've earned? It wasn't even about that. It was all about, hey, bro, we've already talked, we've fought, fought drama here, drama on Twitter, drama there. I don't want to go back to no talking. I've said goodbyes to everyone. We've talked. They offered a solution how to structure the deal i accepted it please i don't want to talk about this anymore and he's like dan said it's okay it's okay so because he heard maybe my voice over from the phone i said like, hey i said to him i don't want to talk about this anymore i'm not giving up anything you know so maybe he heard he's like, yeah, yeah i said it's okay so then he left so a few hours i drive get to london and uh, all of a sudden there's this situation where dan writes him an email but that time I don't know this email, you know? So somehow I still blame the agents. Why will I continue going to QPR? Because we stopped before exposing ourselves. We, we parked and I was waiting. I, I texted Dan, uh, Dan, I text him. I'm like, Dan, well, like what's going on? I don't understand. They are now saying Hoylet something. He doesn't reply me. Like this is like, what, what respect is that? Like he doesn't reply my text just ignores me for two hours. Like, who are you, my friend? Like, we are men, like, respect each other, you know? You are a father of children, I'm a father of children. You know, now I'm looking at it like, how disrespectful is that, you know? Regardless of the situation, just say something. Oh, I'm trying to, so, uh, but he messages the agent, maybe expects the agents to tell me, but he messages him, oh, it's a nightmare, Hoylet won't come, on the conference call, still trying to sort it. I have the emails, I kept them. I. You know, I will put them in my book if I need to one day. But I don't really need this. I'm such a person that once thing is gone, it's gone. I look forward. I don't care. Everybody carries things in their conscience. Karma will pay them, you know. If it's not you that will get that karma, your kids will get the karma. I will never pray for anybody to have bad karma. But I just leave it. I move forward. So he says, oh, it's a nightmare. Since when has it become a nightmare that Hoylet is not coming? There was, If it was a if it was an agreed part of the deal, it's not going to be a nightmare, right? Because that word, it's a nightmare, toilet won't come. I'm like, nightmare? Like, why are you sweating over it? Because we shouldn't be sweating over it if it was part of the deal. Because if toilet changes his mind last minute, that's your own problem, not mine, if you were talking to him, because you said you are on it. That was the only mention of his name that morning. So he upset me. Like, of course, I remember this day as a, like, a terrible day. The whole Nate country is gripped to the TV. But I was just like, nobody took responsibility in the mess. The only statement West Brom put out was, oh, we didn't find a, a replacement, so we couldn't make the deal happen. You know, that doesn't explain the situation to people. And then uh, the agents took no responsibility. Why? Because they will lose their license. You know, they, when, before we continue driving, they said, no, it's sorted now, it's fine. And in my head, I thought West Brom is playing a game for, to squeeze that money out of me. You know, the other one that they rang to say, will he give up that bonus? Because it was decent money. Um, it was 300,000 pounds, you know, because I gave an interview once to, to uh, Birmingham Mail here, and I said to them, there was quite a decent money, 300,000. To, so, so when I when the thing was hanging, I thought, okay, let me. And they said it's fine to go. Let's go to to continue because we have to do medicals. We have to still discuss the contract. I want to see that buyout clause because one thing is speaking with people, another thing is seeing it, right? So we still have medicals to do, some paperwork to do. My um, my work permit has to be also done, so people don't take this in return. We have to tidy up a few things, documents, you know. Um, so he said, they say, it's fine, let's go. So we go. Because I won't doubt if they say it's fine. Now it's sorted, let's go. Because in the morning it was sorted. I thought they were just playing games to squeeze out that 
or the sum out of me. So in my head, I'm like, if last minute, they will kind of force my hand on it, I will give it to them as well. So I, that's why I full, fully confidently said, uh, just trust them saying it's sorted because Dan still no message me back, never said anything to me. So I continue my, my, my drive to, to Queens Park Ranges. And when we're driving, I didn't know if we're going to Loftus Road or we go into uh, the training ground because I don't know where they do their medicals, but we need to at least start doing something. We need to do the medicals, so that's out of the way. So they check my joints, check everything, because a few hours was left. So after that, we arrived there, and apparently after that, they even turned their phones off. They won't even speak to the agents. They will not do nothing. They refuse to do even any, exp they don't want to even talk. Like what kind of you know, behavior is that? So um, then time, imagine you guys are gripped on the TV, but imagine myself, what I was going through. I'm sitting there saying, what the hell is this? You know, like, what's all this? So we had to leave Loftus and wait for them to try and sort things out, you know? And all we did was to wait, 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 wait. They were not coming into contact on the phone, turn their phones off, like, no deal, kind of, because you guys, they feel proud. You want to, like, force their hand. Nobody's forcing your hand. In the morning, you offered us the option how it can be done. We accepted your terms. It wasn't our terms, it was your terms. And now you're saying we're forcing you, like it's a joke. So we waited, the window closes, you know, and nobody else took a responsibility in it. Not West Brom, not uh, Queen's Park Rangers, not, not uh, the agents. Because if it was all, all people involved, somebody had to, agents lose license, that's one. Uh, club to club litigation had to take place because that's uh, going against the rules. Um, nobody, no problem, shove it under the table. Pete's a bad boy. Throw me, let's throw him under the, like, under the bus, as British will say. As you can see by the interview, which was a very good interview, by the way, like I say, link will be in the description. Peter Odomwingi, obviously really, really frustrated about the situation, the breakdown in talks with West Brom, us not not being able to sign Junior Hoyler and have QPR pay his wages, etc. I do kind of feel sorry for him after that interview, but as I mentioned, still remains one of West Brom's biggest legends to this day. Top Premier League goal scorer, and he was absolutely phenomenal for us when he was there. So <laughs> he's actually turned into a golfer now as well, which is quite strange, but not really the career pathway that you expect a footballer to take, but... Fair play to Wadden Wingy. 